Welcome back. So today we are going to start working on a jig for the turbo manifold for the 1.8 cruise. And this jig is just to make sure my stuff doesn't warp, but also possibly to do some production runs off of it should everything come out okay. I guess we'll see. Stay tuned to find out if it comes out okay. So I've got my cylinder head here. I did bolt up the old manifold. I've got my old turbo. Take the flange that I've had cut out, mount that up and do one of the runners. My biggest hurdle is going to be getting around this oil cooler. I do want to make sure that I'm able to change the oil without really, I want to make sure it's, oh, you see easy to do an oil change geez that was spastic however because i don't have the engine block it's still at the machine shop we're going to have to really just kind of mock this up on this table here and build around that and based off of this old manifold and where this turbo was sitting and then i do have a nice black and white picture of how it was set up it will give me a good idea of how to set this thing up. I did run to Metal Depot or Metal Supermarket. I forget what it's called. So I got some two by four tubing that is one eighth of an inch thick along with some one inch tubing. And I got some one and a four aluminum flat bar. So that way I can use this as a heat sink to weld around this flange. And to make sure this thing doesn't warp because last time, it, even still to this day, this thing is warped. So I'm gonna keep this all in one piece and use this as a way the heat sink sink out the heat, the, the, the jello pudding. I think you get the idea. It's gonna dissipate the heat because it's aluminum. Help keep uh, stainless steel just warps really easily. So, oh yeah, got some other things. So went to Harbor Freight, I got me a set of taps here. In order to drill and tap this, along with the steel here, I took my dial calipers and my pitch measuring tool and all that stuff. We've got all of our bolts for the, the manifold here and the, the bolt up the turbo to the T3 flange. We've got our current turbo. We've got our cast collector here, which I am going to shorten down a little bit. Uh, just some assorted cheap drill bits. Hardware to bolt everything down. The appropriate filler rod for the TIG machine, for the TIG welder. So I got some steel filler rod and then some thinner stainless steel rod just to see if that helps during the the, the making of the, the manifold because I kind of felt like the thicker rod that I did have. <laughs> I was I felt like I was putting too much heat into it. And I got some new gloves and some cutoff wheels. And then I've got this thing, which is a stripping wheel, which I think will give it a nice brush finish. However, what we're talking about is building a jig today. And I've got some other goodies here a belt sander so that way i can level the manifold flanges and then a little grinder buffer over here just because i felt like i needed that as a tool in order to be able to produce turbo manifold so i think the first thing i need to do is take this oil cooler and i'm gonna just kind of ghetto it up i do know by looking at pictures and my own pictures and videos it's general location where this is gonna go and pow it's gonna go right about there so i'm just gonna take some screws and let this thing hang from this table and i'm keeping in mind that i need to keep everything in a specific area i do want to retain the air conditioning there's a lot of things to consider and well we've already made one manifold we're just making this one an equal link to the best the best we can all right let's get after this so i do know that this oil cooler sticks out about this far this dude lines up right about here with this little bolt. So I'm going to take a couple screws and we'll just hang this guy here, right about here. <laughs> this is so ghetto. <laughs> uh, I wish this thing had a light on it. It'd make it that much easier. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah. Can, are we just one speed or what? Oh, good enough. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Look at that. Isn't that special? <laughs> Improvisation. 
The next thing I need to do is figure out the, the relationship of the new turbo to where it's actually going to mount. I do feel like I can move it a little more centered since the cold side of the turbo will be facing the air conditioning lines this time around. Uh, so let's mock up this old turbo, see where it's at. We'll toss on the new GT35 turbo and we'll just see where it kind of sits in, in relationship to everything. And then we'll figure out how much we need to move it over and about how far this thing needs to stick out from the actual head without it being too close, melting things. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right, all right, all right. So we know in relationship, this is where this thing's at. I've got just a little bit of a gap between the turbo itself and this manifold. This time around, we're gonna have the turbo turned this way. And I'm thinking it'll probably end up mounting something like that, maybe a little further over this way. So I wanna push as much as they call this the cool side, it still does get a little warm. Uh, according to my picture here, I just don't want it to be running or touching the, the AC lines as little as possible. Let's take our new turb ski and see what we got here. All right, that mounts up pretty much in the same location as the other. However, we're gonna have to clock this thing a little bit because I have to keep in mind, we're gonna need room for this collector. So we'll probably just have to move this over a few inches and I kind of want the collector itself just to be straight up and down like that and then we can route our individual cylinders to it. So I'm thinking it'll probably live somewhere right about here. I'm just gonna take this old flange off or this old manifold. We'll put our new flange on and then kind of figure out perhaps maybe we might want to actually start running off one of the collectors. Most importantly, this side here because we need to avoid this where, or, <laughs> where our oil filter would go. So we kind of need a little something like so. Actually, right about there. So let's take this dude off. All right, there we go. I want this to kind of live somewhere right about here. And let's clock our turbo, see if we can't get this thing orientated in order. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this down a little bit so it's not quite as long. Try and reduce it down to this little portion here. And then we can kind of snake our runners in an orientation that will allow us to clear all this. That way, most of it will live right about here. So we're gonna take our trusty old 13 millimeter wrench and we're just gonna loosen this thing up a little bit. Just enough towards where we can clock it. Let's see what we got here. Mm, might have to angle this just a little more. Actually, no, I think that will be, I think that will be perfect. So I think we'll have it right about here. You know, the more I think about it, I need room for this. Yeah, I think we'll just kind of have to center it up right about here, something like that. A little higher up maybe. Hmm, I think I took the other manifold off a little too soon. Now we didn't have any hood clearance issues with the height of this one. And we're looking at it's almost level with these coils here. So I have to keep that in mind. I might even make some sort of template that, eh, we'll kind of, we'll take a look at it. We'll use some, what I like to call Southern engineering here. All right, so we're gonna take our straight edge and we'll see. Okay, I can't leave this turbo just hanging on there. Otherwise this thing just wants to fall off. So I'm gonna go off the base of this part here. And it looks like we're at like right about three and a half inches up from this lip here to the top of this turbo. So that would give me a good indicator as to how high I can actually put this turbo. All right, let's take this off and start all over. So if we want it this way, right about here, three and a half inches. We're gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of this little piece here, just kind of lining up equal with this. And we'll get her as close as we can. Yeah. I'd say right about there. It's a good new home for it. <laughs> I'd say right about there is a new good home for it. What do you think about that, buddy? All right. Now to figure out. <laughs> 
do this with two hands. <laughs> uh. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this flange. I'm just going to go ahead and cut down this stock, bolt the thing up to the cylinder head, and then I think we can take some of our one inch stock here and then put it in its general location. I think that probably would be best. So let's go ahead and do that. I think I want to cut this right about here. That will give us a section to mount up the flange, and then our, our T3 flange for the turbo, <laughs> and then our, our head flange. So I'll take my T-square, I'll just draw that off. Oh lordy, how did that happen? Let's try that again. All right, that's better. Eh, we'll, we'll get it figured out. Let's go ahead and cut this. After some careful thinking, what I'm going to do is, or <laughs> what I already have done is, I mounted the flange off the cylinder head. I went ahead and mounted that up and I assembled this belt sander, this sander, and I'm just going to make one of the runners because it, it's going to be a little complicated kind of figuring out how to make this jig without at least one of those runners in place. So let's go ahead and do that. So one of the first things I need to do is I'm just going to cut this down just a little bit. This thing is kind of long. Part of me just wants to cut this down here, cut it here as well. But the only issue is, is it starts to, it's round here, but then it starts to go into the actual collector portion here. And it's not too far down from up here. So I might leave this as is, and then maybe just cut this down just a little bit, just to kind of shorten this thing up. Also, I'm going to have to have a little bit of a standoff in order for this to kind of come out and my elbow actually clear this because if it's mounted right up against it, we're going to hit this coolant tubing. So I need this to come off eh, maybe about two inches. I'm going to take a measurement, figure out how long I need to cut that off, and then we'll kind of have it angled down a little bit like that and we'll come up to... It'll probably be one of the, the backside parts of this collector just to kind of get it away from there. So one of the things I have to do is mash this thing down in order to fit this shape, which is somewhat of an oval. I mean, it is an oval, so hopefully this vise is up to the task to squeeze this down a little bit. I'm going to try my best not to mar this up in the process because the jaws here are a little jagged just to give it you know, some grip. So we'll see. We shall see. Wish me luck. Man, that's working out a lot better than I thought it would. Good old cheap Harbor Freight vice to the, to the rescue. So here are the final results. It worked pretty well. It is a good oval shape. I did try using the vice to kind of push this in and round it off a little bit and that did help this is my first attempt here in which you know it didn't do too bad but i didn't take into consideration the seam here in the piping so it has a little bit of a weird shape so i went ahead and just did the other end and i would say it fits up pretty nice that will give me some room to weld things up there's a minimal amount of gap which i can just fill in with some filler rod but i think this is ready to go so now we can figure out how much we need here and i'm thinking maybe a couple inches and then we'll start making one of our runners i'm thinking somewhere around here should work out quite nice give us plenty of space in between our oil cooler and I think it'll work out so I'm gonna go ahead and chop it down right there I've got some tape on this piece of pipe here so that way I can use it as a little bit of a guideline so let's go ahead and cut this and then we'll tack this to the manifold flange thing of a bobber All right, I got this piece all nice and leveled out. Now let's go ahead and tack it to the, the flange. All right, I got that first kind of lead off from the 
manifold going into our runner all tacked up. I'm going to take a few of these 90 degree elbows. I'm just trying to really imagine how this is going to go and made up to this guy. I'm thinking I probably might just use a little tape just to kind of hold things together and I can draw a line, line them up, tack them together, and then we'll see where we're at with everything. All right, so I've messed around with this configuration a little bit and I think it will just help. I just need to go ahead and cut this down. I'll tack the, the flange on and then that will really help me kind of visualize how that first runner will go. So that way we can move forward with making this jig. this thing all cut down leveled out and now I'm gonna take this piece here and I'm just gonna tack it on and then we're gonna move forward with the runner right there well I think I've made some great progress for the night <laughs> though it doesn't look like I got any further uh, I, I think I just need to kind of really think about what I'm doing here and how I want to execute it. Maybe look at some more photos of other manifolds. Well, that's about all I can do for the manifold and the jig, because at this point, I'm still waiting on those damn pistons from JE. <laughs> Go over and heckle them, if you don't mind. I'm ironing all that stuff out, called them. The owner is supposed to call me. Nothing, just nothing. I really need to get the engine together in the car so I can make sure I'm not building this jig and the manifold, there's no clearance issues. I'm not gonna be running into the AC lines, any of that stuff, but I'm trying to keep a positive attitude about it, trying to move forward. Sooner and later, this engine's gonna be put back together and in the car, we'll have that manifold made, producing some boost, breaking some records. Until next time, peace out with your peace out.